Agent Bard, have you completed your objectives? I'm working on a control. I'm not feeling too keen about you being over my shoulder all the time. I'm sorry, but that's pretty much my job. It's how things get done and we all stay alive. I'm the one with three racks on hunters on my trail, but by all means, let's make sure that you're safe from harm. Enough games, Bard. Sensors show they'll be on you any second. All right, Control, and all done. All that's left is to beat feet out of here. Prophet, I'm in position. I'm sure he's here. I can smell him. Strike that, Control. Plans have changed. Number six on my list is from the guys at Plaid Hat. Well, technically the guys at Plaid Hat worked with the folks at Nazca Games to bring us Spectre Ops. Now, Spectre Ops takes place in a cyberpunk future where one company, the Raxon Corporation, has basically taken control over the entire planet. Now, there are people who kind of resist that, and they kind of go against the corporation, and they are called, you know, are called ARC. And uh, in this game, you're either playing as um, an agent of ARC, or you're playing as hunters working for Raxon, who are trying to make sure that that agent does not get out of here alive. Now, some of the things I love about this game are that it's a hidden movement game, and I'm a big fan of hidden movement, and it's also a one versus many game. Now, the short version of these things is that hidden movement means that uh, the movement that's happening around the board does not actually happen on the board. In this case, it's actually recorded on a pad. Uh, whoever's in control of the agent actually takes pen and paper and marks out on a, a pad that is basically the exact same copy of the board in paper form, and just marks out, I moved here, and then I moved here, and then I moved here, and you actually can, can show each step, where they were each step. And that's important because some of the hunters actually, or there's one of them named Prophet, who can actually say, where were you two turns ago, and you're required to answer them. So the agent is moving around the board secretly. The hunters are actually going around the board trying to find you. Now they can do that with line of sight by actually being in the actual sight line of the agent and each hunter actually also has some special abilities which allows them to kind of get in and find them. Uh, the one I referenced in the opening here is Beast. Beast actually has the ability that if you're within a certain number of squares of the person, you, Beast can smell that they're close. So you, you can literally say, do I smell you? Which is always fun when you're playing this game. I actually say that all the time. Do I smell you? And uh, if they're within a certain amount of spaces, they're required to say that. There are things like Prophet who can say, where were you two turns ago? There's also things like, uh, I love the Puppet who actually can, can move this car that has a motion sensor. And the motion sensor, if the agent actually moved so many spaces that turn, the motion sensor will say he's in this corner of the board. So it kind of limits the, because the, the board is huge, so it kind of limits that and kind of says you're within this area is where you need to be looking. I love this game because there's so much, I, I've played a bunch of games that do this, and they've been around for a while, and I'm, that's why honorable mention for this one, I'm actually hard because I have to narrow it down to which one I'm going to reference, but the thing that I love and what sets Spectre Ops apart for me is that Spectre Ops, every person is unique. There are a bunch of different agents that you can choose from, and each one has special abilities. There are a bunch of different hunters that you can choose from, and each one has special abilities. The agents even also, they have gear that allows them to do crazy things, and several of the, the agents actually have gear that's specific to them. You can only use those things if you're playing as that agent. There's so much, like, just interesting play there too because the hunters do not know which agent they're dealing with until the first time that that agent is seen. So you can be going through half the game having no idea what you need to be prepared for because I I know that there's there's one of the agents actually has a decoy that says, oh you you know, you're gonna go over this way, but they're gonna see a a token that says the last place you saw them was over here instead. And that can change everything. The placement of that, that this is the last place you saw me token is huge. And so you can actually tweak that with one of the pieces of gear. Like there is so much interesting stuff happening and it, it, it's based on the choices of who gets played and what combination I've seen 
different combinations. I actually saw, it was fun because there was one time I saw the puppet whose ability is to move, you know, the car around. I actually saw one duo decided that uh, they were going to play as the puppet and the gun. And the gun basically hopped in the car, the puppet moved the car, and then the gun went and like set up shop. And they basically spent the entire game just hunting down the agent because they basically had a, they developed a rolling tank kind of technique where the gun would just set up shop in the car. It was, oh, it was so fantastic. See, you can do that. You can have that combination stuff. You can have that, that cool stuff because each person is unique and I love that. So I think that if you love or if you're even curious about this kind of game, this hidden movement and this one versus many, uh, I think this game is above and beyond the rest of them. They're all good, and they all have their own unique points, but I think for me, this one kind of is the epitome of what this style of game does. If, if you don't like this style of game, and I know there's a lot of people who don't, so like previous titles, you know, I'm going to remind you, this is my list. This is the games that I enjoy. But I think that if, if this is even remotely something that sounds interesting, you should definitely check out Specter Ops because it does what it does very well. Like I said, there are a lot of games that do what Specter Ops does. So it actually makes it pretty difficult to come up with the honorable mention because there's lots of games that I could cite here. However, I, I thought about it, and I narrowed it down, and I have to say that my honorable mention goes to Fury of Dracula. Now, this game just got a new edition, it just got a reprint, and I remember when Spectre Ops first came out, a lot of people were saying, man, it, I wish that I could be playing Fury of Dracula instead. Now, at the time, Fury of Dracula was out of print, and you couldn't get it, and so it was kind of a moot point, but right now... Fury of Dracula is available, and the kind of the interesting thing that Fury of Dracula does from what I've heard is that it gives each side a little bit more agency. Dracula is a little bit bigger and nastier than the agents are going to be, and the hunters actually have the ability to like block off roads to say, you know, Dracula can't go this way. So it really does get a little bit more complexity. I don't know... For me personally, if that added complexity actually is a positive or a negative, there are times when I just like a very clean, very simple design. So, I don't know, maybe next year we'll come back and I'll, have, I'll say that Fury of Dracula trumped Spectre Ops, but as of right now, I think that they're both super close. Guys, thanks for coming back and watching this video for number 6 on my top 10. Numbers 5 through 1, we're going to actually go probably into January. I might get number 5 in before the end of the year. We'll see how schedules work. But I really look forward to sharing the next 5 with you guys because it really only gets better and more impressive from here on out. And we've already had a bunch of really great games on this list. So I'm looking forward to the next one, which is going to involve all of us coming together to persist and survive the Great War. We're going to be looking at the grizzled next time, and I hope you'll come back and watch that one.